How, how do you connect with, with the millennials, the, the kids out there? Well, you know, first of all, all of my children are in that age bracket from 23 to 39. So I surround myself with young people. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm trying to motivate young people, I listen to young people yeah. because things change. You know, I used to get on guys at my mentoring camp about wearing dreads and everything. Hey, man, take a picture of you. Well, those, those things are changing now. And so I had, to, I, had, I had to quit talking to them about it and just had to go with it, you know. My parents didn't care for large, bouncy afros. My father despised it. Why would you want all that hair on your head? Boy, get a haircut. You know, he, he's probably happy as all get out right now, but, <laughs> you know, I had the big, huge, bouncy afro. And I just had to learn, man, that times change with different times. So I got smart. I surround myself with young people because they're more tech savvy. This is a tech world, you know. Everything can be looked up. Everything can be done quicker. Uh, these packages, I'm from the old school where you sent away for a DVD set in the mail and you waited on it to come and you got nine DVDs and you had to save them in a <laughs> stack and download them in a machine. All oh, that's changed. Yeah. Everything's digital now. You can download and stuff like that. You know, uh, <laughs> like for example, I had a TV show, uh, Little Big Shots. And oh, I love that show. Now that, that show I really liked. Because I'm an expert at communicating at any level. Here's a mistake producers on TV make. They got these kids that have these incredible gifts that they do. And they put a producer onto the kid and they prep them for the interview. And I'm going, that's not gonna matter. Yeah. So they prep these kids, oh, we, they, we've got six questions and the lady on the cue card is over there with the cue cards for the questions. I already know what's gonna happen. This little kid, that door's gonna open. When they walk out on stage at rehearsal, it's empty. Well, there's 2,000 people out here now. They stand on the dot. They're supposed to wave and come right over to the sofa and start talking. <laughs> they just get stuck on the wave. <laughs> That's, yeah. There's a seven-year-old waving to 2,000. When has he seen 2,000 people? Never. So I got to call him. I get him over here. <laughs> now, the question that the cue card lady want me to ask him, this kid, he's looking for his parents in the crowd. He don't care nothing about that question. So I try to ask the question on the cue card, and so I got to stop. So now I got to find something that this kid can answer me that he doesn't have to remember what the producer said. So I got to say, hey, man, where you get them shoes from? That he looked down at his shoes. My mama bought them at the store. How much was them shoes? How much you think them shoes cost? I don't know. About a thousand dollars? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got on thousand dollar shoes? And I just start the interview right there. Man, that shoe is a sharp jacket, man. I like my jacket, Mr. D. And we start a conversation. Yeah. The cue card lady is just, she's got <laughs> oh, the cue geez. card. <laughs> That's and exactly right. It. This is so true. This is so true. <laughs> and she's losing, her makeup's running. <laughs> but I already know. Yeah. I got to calm this kid down. Oh, yes. Who's looking for his mom and daddy. I got, I got room full of stuff right here. So. I, got, I, I know how to talk to anybody because I'm surrounded by young people. I have grandkids, you understand? So I'm talking to a five-year-old all the time, which is like a mindless conversation. <laughs> it's like really difficult to do and I don't really enjoy it. But, I know, but TV, they pay me a lot of money, so I sit here and I talk to people, but I want to end the conversation as quick as possible. But I've surrounded myself with young people. I've, I've learned how to talk in a way that they can understand or relate. Sure. Now, if I can do that to a five-year-old who is not my child, you don't think it would resonate with me to take that same skill set and put it into an adult. We're all the same. We're just very, very large, more experienced children. Yeah, but can I say something on, on yeah. younger audience, Steve? What I believe is, because I'm asked all the time in the business community, one of the, maybe the most popular question is, is the business community say, well, how do we, how do we handle millennials, or you know what I mean? And how do we, and, and let me say this, you can get along with any generation if you value that generation. Mm. It's value. The moment that kids know that you really care for them, 
and, and that you're out of it, and you know that you're not hip and all that process. Right. That, that, I mean, you just disqualify yourself immediately because you, you're not right. going to be, you, hey, um, I can't fake it till I make it. They've got eyes. So here's, so, so what I've got to do, that, but the moment they know I value them right. and that I believe in them, you know, sometimes old people, they're cranky. And, and they think that they're the last great generation and everybody's going to go to hell after them. And I, <laughs> hey, after hundreds of generations, we're not in hell yet. So it's not true. <laughs> so, so my whole thing is once that you value them and you, then you want to add value to them, they immediately, they, 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 they connect with you. That's true. They, they connect with you, not over you, you're with it or that it's, uh, there's an age. They connect with you because every person wants somebody to believe in them. Every person wants somebody to value them. And every person wants somebody to unconditionally love them. Mm. You put those three in any kind of communication package, That's right. you're there.